Let's talk about what happens when you send out packages domestic and internationally. Let's talk about some of the things that can go wrong. Let's talk about returns. Let's talk about stupid customers. Let's talk about customers that want to cheat you. Let's talk about trouble on the crazy picker life with wheeler dealer and banana peeler welcome fellow pickers and would-be adventurers tuesday tuesday edition of the crazy picker life it is late tuesday today was supposed to be a day off i felt like i've worked it oh my goodness dealer take a day off you should take a day off once in a while. Well, I took days off for like six weeks in a row. <sighs> and I, you know, I mentioned to everybody, January, February, March, even April, busy camera months. Everybody's buying. So, you know, I come in on Tuesday to take my packages in. I got two or three people that want stuff like expedited can you get it out today can you expedite this overseas can you do that and i'm like oh my goodness it's my day off <laughs> so i helped a couple of them out one of them i tried to help out you know couldn't couldn't pull the trigger we'll see if it turns out tomorrow but you know somebody with no experience on how something orders this person asked me uh, on their PayPal, that was the only message I got, they put a, a little message on their PayPal, which I can pick up on, I, I see those messages, but they're like, can you expedite this to Canada? Here's his, then the name and then a phone number, and I'm like, ah, I, you know, I don't call Canada, I don't call people. I don't call people foreign. We're not a, you know, we're not that high service. <laughs> so I, you know, I emailed them on their PayPal email. I emailed them on their eBay email. I sent them a PayPal invoice for the upcharge on uh, on the shipping. They they paid like 10, 12 bucks for regular standard first class. They wanted expedited. That was like 41 bucks. So I emailed them the difference. I PayPal invoiced them the difference. You know, nothing. So we'll see how that goes tomorrow. And then I'll, I might call them or I'll send it out. I probably will just send it out. I don't call people. That, you know, that's not the, that's not the Einlon game. You got to email me. <laughs> okay, so I came in tonight on my day off. Look what I did. If I let that go till tomorrow, and there'll be a bunch more orders tomorrow, I'll pack all day. I won't get anything listed. So I came in and packed that. That's probably... I'm using these new small eBay boxes, by the way. They're nice. They're free. Uh, you know, there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, there's probably almost 20 orders here. That That is hard for me. That's hard for me to leave till the next day. So sometimes taking a day off. Hey, Wheeler. Hey, what's up? Wheeler's working on his day off too. He likes it here. Workaholics. Anyway, it's hard for me to leave those orders. You know, I just can't do it. So whatever. I'm going to sit in my chair here. Oh! And I want to talk a little bit about what to expect when you send orders out and you know the questions I get the comments I get some of the feedback I get I know that there are people in my audience you viewers that are very competent do a lot of eBay business do a lot of Amazon business uh, there's a lot of you that do good business, middle business, whatever you want to call it, part-time business. And then there's a bunch of people that are new or newer or watching this. And so I have a varied audience from, from newbies all the way to very experienced. 
and and I know not everybody has identified themselves and that's fine so this program that I'm going to do right here and what I'm going to talk about is going to try to reach everybody from my perspective here's what happens when you send an order out okay most orders that I send out get there in a timely fashion people open it up and they like it they like what they got it was what they ordered it lived up to their expectations it worked for them sometimes it exceeds their expectations the feedback that we get for the most part is a plus you know we get good feedback we're doing our job I get some feedback sometimes that almost brings me to tears because this person got something that they wanted it exceeded their expectations maybe they'd been looking for it they'd been waiting for it they got it they're super excited it's like woo 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 you know but that's not <laughs> that's not what we're going to talk about today are we we're going to talk about what goes wrong some of the things that go wrong a lot of things can go wrong and my first piece of advice is this no matter what when you deal with customers when you work with the general public when you are in the buying and selling slash service business i don't know what you want to call this but when you're when you're buying and selling something when you're dealing with used merchandise when you're selling things that need to be shipped and can be handled poorly through shipping occasionally you're going to have some customer service experiences you're going to have some bad experiences people on the other end that receive your products are not going to be happy some of the time and so when these things happen and they will happen you can't take it personally you can't take it personally when it hits your wallet you need to take the gut shot or the chin shot or the cheek shot you need to take that oh 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 you need to feel bad for like 60 seconds and then you need to get up you need to take care of business you need to make it as good for you and the person as possible set it aside and move on you cannot let it bring you down because it will try to bring you down and if you let it bring you down it will affect your day it will affect your business it will affect the relationship you have with your loved ones it will affect your health it will affect your long-term profitability of your business do not let it affect you long term in fact shake it off now if you have a track record a heavy track record of having trouble with people you do need to identify the problem and make sure it is not something you're doing uh, some people have shipped things in cheap boxes cheap packaging uh, some people don't understand how to test things some people don't know how to describe things take pictures there are sellers that are at fault you might be at fault if you have a constant feedback and track record of having a problem if that is true you need to identify that and take care of it now I'm not really talking about those kind of things I'm talking about my business and some of the things that have happened that just make you shake your head scratch your head pull your hair out punch yourself drink a beer 
I'm trying one of these uh, EKU28 unfiltered 11% alcohol. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> the, this is the kind of beer you drink and like smoke comes out of your ears. That's why I have this hat down over my ears so you can't see the smoke. Okay, let's talk about... Oh, what should we talk about? Let's talk about domestic, USA shipping. I live in northwest Kansas. I ship a lot of packages to the 50 states and some of the territories of the United States, right? <sighs> some of the bad things that can happen. If you ship a package out and the person gets the item and they don't like it, they may tell you that something's wrong with it. And you may know, how can something be wrong with that item? I tested it. It's a simple item. There's nothing wrong with it. So you might email them back. Hey, um, we tested that. And you might ask them a question, or you might say, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Try this. You might say, here's a link to the instruction manual. You might ask them some questions, like I said, and they might sidestep all of that. There's nothing wrong with your item. They just don't want it, and they don't want to tell you they don't want it. So you can go back and forth, whatever, right? You can go back home. You can go back and forth till the cows come home, till the next blue moon. Eleven o'clock. It's eleven o'clock. PM. You can go back and forth with them, but you're just wasting your time. Sooner or later, you know, you're going to say, well, return it. And they may have already opened a case. And a lot of times they might open an eBay case. And so that puts an urgency to it, right? You're like, you opened a case. Son of a gun, something's wrong with it. And they might have a stupid excuse on there like, doesn't work right. <laughs> and so you're emailing them, what doesn't work right? Oh, it doesn't work right. It, you get a hundred different responses, right? And then they'll send it back. And nine times out of ten, they'll send it back on your dime. Which means through eBay. And eBay does a nice job of disguising how much it costs you. But it costs you. When you send it back through eBay and it's the seller's fault, supposedly, well, you pay for it. So it comes back. You look at it. You test it. Um, you compare it to pictures. You want to make sure it's actually your item, right? There's nothing wrong with it. You're like, WTF! Exclamation <laughs> mark. And at that point, all you can do is refund the money. You know, they don't want it. You could go and chase your shipping cost. I've never done it. You could go chase the person and say, what's wrong with it? It, it works fine for me. I don't do that anymore. You could do all these things, but in reality, you need to just wake up, refund their money, take the shipping arrow, Pull it out, <laughs> relist your item, move on. Because you ain't going to get nowhere. The system is a little bit loaded against you, and you're best just closing the case or taking the item. That's that. They just didn't want it. They didn't want to tell you they didn't want it. A, they didn't want to hurt your feelings. B, they didn't want to pay the shipping charge back. C, They've lost their mind. D, they don't drink Schlitz. E, they spent their money somewhere else. Whatever. Take it back. Refund their money. Relist it. Move on. Now, occasionally something will get set out, sent out, and it will get broken in shipment 
or like our stuff is vintage some of that stuff is affected by the cold some of that stuff is affected by who knows they get it they're smart people they look at it it doesn't work right you go back and forth a little bit send it back you get it back it doesn't work right for whatever reason again smaller arrow pull it out throw the thing out list it for parts refund the money move on right i don't like returns i hate returns but they're a part of the business and here's what i can do i get a return i can handle it i get a return i can handle it i get a return i can handle it the thing that gets me is when i get like none 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 and then it's like three four in a short period of time as a professional professional seller that even makes me go oh gut shot son of a bitch that's it i'm gonna bleed out <laughs> and so it takes me a little while to bleed out and then i'm like oh i didn't really bleed out i better get up and move on right so it can happen to the best of us but don't let the little ones don't let the return here two weeks later the return there don't let those get to you i mean when you get the in a short period of time then you can do the old oh no the bear trap got me on the blankety blank <laughs> but you shouldn't let the you shouldn't let the one one return here and the one return get you that's the nature of this business okay so some people some people pull a real funny one i've had you know holiday time like this christmas time like this you get a few more returns people buy stuff uh as a gift then they break up with their boyfriend their girlfriend they have a divorce whatever they don't give the gift and then they're like i gotta return this um you know so they give you the craziest excuses that don't make any sense like i ordered this by mistake <laughs> What? 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 It's a camera lens. It fits a certain camera. You obviously picked it out. You ordered it by mistake? What? You, you hit the button? You hit another button to pay? You saw my emails, my tracking, everything that's coming at you? You got it? You ordered it by mistake? Ah. Uh. A lot of times, at least when they do that, they have to pay shipping back, right? I, I haven't figured out the eBay automated return thing. And sometimes I shake my head, but most of the time I'm like, whatever. Take care of it. Pull the arrows out. <clears throat> move on, right? I can't tell when they're charging me for shipping or not. I can't tell when they open a case and they say, I ordered this by mistake. That's one of the choices that they get. You know, they get choices like, I thought this was a fruitcake, but it wasn't. I ordered it by mistake. It was broken, not as described, shiny. I thought it was matte. <laughs> you know, all these choices are, who comes up with these? So I can't tell if I get charged on that or not, and I don't even care because it's just part of the business. The more you sell, the more returns you're going to get, right? The bigger you get, the more returns you're going to get, whatever. So now here are some examples. We, um, we sell video recorders sometimes we sell the ones that used to use the old vhs sometimes we sell beta which by the way i've got some beta stuff back there oh anybody out there have a blank beta tape i'll buy it from you i should just buy one online <laughs> we sell sell the ones with the little mini vhsc little tapes 
We send out the ones with the round discs. We send out the ones with the CDs. We, we have the digital ones. All those video recorders sell for one price or another. Here's something that is happening more and more, and I think it happened a lot more over the holidays, which it does bother me. These video recorders are heavy. We might sell one for 99 bucks, free shipping. So in a lot of cases, $99 free shipping, it's gonna cost me 15 bucks to ship out, right? $15 out. They get it, and they either act like it's broken, they act like it's the wrong thing. Hey, I thought it was DV tapes and it's PV tapes, or it's disc and it wasn't disc, whatever. You know, I, I ordered this by mistake. Um, I thought it was pink and it turns out it's silver like all of them, whatever. And they send it back. And some of the time I pay for that shipping back, right? So 15 out, 15 back, plus fees, that starts to get kind of rough. Although, let me just clarify, the fees tend to get credited to you when you refund the money. So I know a portion of those people ordered this thing, transferred their old tapes to their new media, and then said, all right, I'm going to send that thing back. Right? Use it for what you're going to need. Send it back. That happens to us on camera lenses. That happens to us on certain pieces of equipment. It's cost of doing business. It's almost enough where I'm about ready to get out of that uh, little niche. That niche was really good for a while, but it's... um. It's not as good as it used to be. So the the people that are left that are buying these things are transferring their tapes. And some of those people are dishonest. They're using me. You're using me, people. <laughs> and, I, you know, I'm over it, but I don't like it because it affects my bottom line, right? Now, you may have a product line like that, too, or you may have totally different problems, okay? I'm giving you some of my problems. The camera business is not without problems. Now, another thing that can happen, like I said, people will people will lie to you to get the product shipped back so it's not out of their pocket. People will buy adapters from us. They'll they'll get in and it it won't work for them, but it's not because of our description necessarily it's because they didn't do their research. And then they'll be like it, you know, not as described, didn't fit. And we'll email them and we'll go, yeah, that's for a digital camera, not a film camera. Or that's for a film camera, not a digital camera. They didn't read the description very well. And so again, that comes back on our dime. You know, the hatchet in the shoulder. You pull that out, you're like, shit, I'm bleeding all over. You sew that up, you take the hatchet, you throw it at the wall where all the hatchets are, you relist the item, you move on. What is our return rate on camera gear? Camera gear is, is our worst return rate. Of all the items that I sell, um, Northwest Kansas items, I get very few back. Occasionally... I'll say, okay, it didn't work. Keep it. Here's your money back. Occasionally something will come back. Or mail will break something and then I have to refund the money. Occasionally. Camera gear? I should keep a statistic. 2-3%? Something like that. Something like that. Maybe 4% on certain months. So camera gear is highly, and I think, you know, we're, we're pretty skilled. Wheeler's pretty skilled at listing that stuff. I'm pretty skilled at packing it so it gets there in one piece. 
that's you know that's that's the business now you're going to have to look at your business at some point and if your return and your damage rate and your screwball customer rate is too high you need to look at some of the things you're doing but if you do it for a while and you improve certain processes in your business you're going to know eh, here's what i know if i go like 3 weeks without a return and we send 400 plus packages a month. If I go three weeks without a return, I know I'm going to get a day where it's going to be like, Mer, wham, wham. It's going to be like in the nuts with bowling balls all day long. Wham, oh, wham, oh, wham, oh. <laughs> so what you have to do there is you have to take the bowling balls that have hit you Bundle them up, call the family, go to the bowling lanes, bowl a couple games, and get over it. <laughs> There's nothing else you can do. I have literally talked to people. I've literally seen videos from people who post videos. I've literally read on message boards people that have quit their business because of returns. It's just, it's pushed them over the edge. Don't. Let that happen. All right, that's domestic shipping. Now, there are people out there on certain items that will buy items from you and try to scam you. We try to take good pictures of items, so if something does come back to us, we can identify it as our item. In other words, the person didn't pull like a, a switch out. Like their nice thing broke. They're like, okay, I'm going to order one from eBay. And then I'm going to act like I don't like it. And I'm going to send back my broken one. I get this one mostly free. Or free. We take good pictures of our items. If they're serial numbers, take a picture of it in the listing. So they see that. That keeps away the bad guys. Take really good pictures. Because the ones that they like to order and scam are the ones with the blurry pictures. The ones where you can't tell. And when you get that item back and you try to compare it to your blurry pictures, you might go, this doesn't look like my item, but you can't compare it to your blurry pictures. There's no way to figure that out, right? Because then you can play hardball. Still, you're going to lose half the time, but at least you know, hey, I've been scammed. <laughs> That's only happened to us a couple times. My worst scam. Do you want to know what my worst scam on me was? I don't know if I've ever told this story. We bought a lot of cameras online. We might have bought three lots. I don't know. Somebody listed some really good cameras. And for whatever reason, their titles and their listings, everything else was kind of crappy. And we got them at a really good price. Maybe three, four hundred bucks total for like three, four lots. And so the person on the other end probably was upset because they didn't get a lot of money. They still need to honor the sale and send me the stuff, right? So we pay for it. They had reasonable feedback. They had a hundred feedback or something. So the person's like, all right, we're sending it out. We're like, cool, because we want to see some of this stuff. We get a box, and out of 60 pounds of stuff, we get a box with like 8 pounds in it. And it's like a very small portion of the entire lot, right? We get it. We look at it. We're like, all right, where's the rest of it? So we email back, where's the rest of it? Oh, I'll send it out. I'm like, okay, whatever. We're busy. We put it on the back burner. Two weeks pass. Where's the rest of it? Oh, I'll send it out. Somehow we got to the point where we couldn't open a case. And this person, this Talion Diggs dude from the East Coast, I'll never forget his name. He cheesed us. He totally cheesed us. He sold all this stuff. He sent us bits and pieces of crap. It turned out I think we were able to sell it for like 60 bucks, and he never so sent us anything else. Oh my goodness. What a deal. He strung us along. I thought we were on the ball. 
So I was out like 300 bucks. I mean, I threatened to come to his place of business and beat out his door. <laughs> He's like, come on over, man. <laughs> uh, I can, you know, I fabricated a couple stories to try to get him to send me the rest of my stuff. It was too late to open a case on eBay. I don't know if this was before they had longer time periods. I don't remember. This was years back. Boy, that stung me, though. I might need to look that up if I can. We'll be traveling. Maybe I ought to, you know, roll into his neighborhood yet. You never know. Could do that, right? So there are things out there. Another time somebody, I bought air purifiers off Craigslist. The guy sent me, supposed to send me four brand new air purifiers. And I got them in and I was so busy. The four packages sat there for a while. I don't know how many days or weeks passed. I finally opened them. I think I opened one of them and it was good. I opened all four of them. Two of them were good. One of them was used air purifier. It had like 60 pounds of cat hair in it. Ruined. And then the fourth one was like a different brand thrown in there. Like worthless. And so... <laughs> You know, I was out a couple hundred bucks. These are the worst stories ever. Now, we do, uh, let's say, 400-plus packages. We do 5,000-plus packages a year, and we buy stuff out there. You're going to have these problems. And so, although I hold on to a little bit of the pain, it's more it's more like the scars, you know? The guy took the uh, the bulldozer and uh you know ran me over and i got up and i still have like the scars on my legs i'm over it i can still walk right <laughs> i do know what to look for and i can almost tell right away when somebody's scamming me if they email me and they want something different i mean i i almost can tell 100 percent of the time what's going on and I'm able, through experience, to deflect some of that now. So, that's good. That'll happen with you as you get your battle scars. Some of you already have your battle scars and your stories. By the way, if you got a really good story and you want to tell it and or get it off your chest, hey, lay it out below. We'll share that. That'll be available for everybody. If... Um, if you're watching this video and you want to see some good stories, just hang out a week from now. Come back to this video and look below. Give us your best story below. Because it's, you know, they're all versions of the same old song. They really are. But there are stories, and some of them are crazy. Some of them are just what happens. Some of them are, you know... Um, just need to get over them. <laughs> let it out, man. Just let it out below. How about that? <sighs> Let's talk international for a minute, and then I'm going to wrap this up. Now, international, unfortunately, fortunately, international is a good business outlet. We, you know, a lot of the stuff, camera stuff, we buy for pennies on the dollar. We really do. We get a lot of our camera stuff for a couple bucks and sell it for 20, a couple bucks and sell it for 30. It's long tail sales, but it's really high markup, okay? The thing that kills me about international, and so by the way, international sales, we got to have it. We sell 25% international. I'll take it. Some of our best, biggest sales go international. I'll take it. But the lunacy that you get shipping United States to United States addresses, the lunacy multiplies when you go international. And if you're not prepared for that, you probably should either do one of two things, not do it or do global shipping. In fact, we're starting to think that we're just going to do all global shipping because it's getting worse. The international thing. If you're sending first class international. 
to half the countries you send to international from the United States, it's getting bad. In you know, first class international is so slow and so challenged. It's getting bad. It, it, I'll just admit it. It's 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 not so great. I mean, there's places that are worse, and there's places that are better. Sending first class to China, sending first class to South America, sending first class to, I guess what you would call third world countries. Boy, you gotta you gotta communicate with the people that it's going to. That hey, this could take a while. And they seem to be under the impression that it's not going to take a while. And so, ends. I think some of them are getting, getting the wind that if they order something first class international, it doesn't show up in two or three weeks, they can complain enough to eBay. And eBay is going to refund their money. The thing's still going to show up. I'm starting to feel that way. And I, I'm not trying to be negative. It's like a refillable bottle. It's so weird. The inside of the lip is almost like a returnable bottle. Almost cut my lips. Whew. Don't lose the lips. <laughs> so here's the things that compound international, okay? There's a language barrier. There's a distance barrier. There's a U.S. mail to sort of a U.S. mail to however they deliver on the other end. There's all kinds of timing issues. You can ship something international. It'll go into Chicago to the sort center. It might sit there for weeks before they get enough packages to send to some of these places. We've shipped to over 100 different countries. Every once in a while now, I ship to a country. I may have heard of it, but I've never shipped to it. Some of them I've, I've never heard of. <laughs> Amazing. But it, ha it has to wait in Chicago until there's a container full or however they do it. Then it goes over there, and I think it can sit in, in the jungle for a month. They sort it, and then they, you know, they shoot it out there by... I don't know what they do. <laughs> I've had packages international go out there off in space, priority mail, first class mail. The person doesn't get it. Two or three months have passed. I feel bad. I refund their money. I've had eight months of package come back to me. Eight months? <laughs> Wow, today's world, that's crazy. But, okay, so people can't read. If you are doing international shipping, you need to spell out in your title if there's a defect. You need to spell out in red in your body of your thing. You're still going to get people that can't read very well, and when they Google Translate, if they Google Translate, a lot of that stuff doesn't really translate very well. So you're going to get some problems. So if you're shipping international, make sure it's worth it to you. In a lot of cases, I think it is. We do a lot of international. Um, where the problems we have in the United States might be 3%, international it might be double that, 6%. That's not terrible. But it is, it is worse. It is worse. And if you get your first thing that you spent 40 bucks on and on shipping or your customer spent 40 bucks you ship it over there and it's only worth 50 bucks and something's wrong with it you have to make the decision if you want them to ship it back or worst case it's your fault for some reason and you want to ship it back and pay that 40 bucks on a 50 dollar item so you might be out, you know, you might be out whatever you paid for your $50 item, 20 bucks, and you might be out the $40 shipping. Until that happens to you, you might think international shipping is great. And then when that hits you, you might be like, whoa, 
what just happened here? <laughs> I'm out 60 bucks on a $50 item that I paid 20 bucks for. So I'm not trying to scare you off, but international shipping, um, it, it can be challenging. When you ship a lot, when you have economies of scale, there's a payment. Somebody bought something. Where's my ka -ching? Probably not. Uh, the only one that ka -chings on my phone is the camera business, and we get a lot of ka -chings. The other ones, you know, you can't, ha there's no app that I know about for a phone that can handle four eBay accounts. If anybody out there is an app builder, I think there are serious sellers out there, quite a few of us that have two, three, four accounts. I don't know. So, international shipping, the language thing is a problem. When you're answering questions to people that are asking you, there's a problem there. You have to use Google Translate. You do the best you can. There, I will put it this way, though. If somebody in a foreign country is looking for a product, they can't find it locally, you send them something, there is a certain reward feeling about getting them something that they can't find locally. A lot of times, even though you can't read their comment because it's in a different language, <laughs> um, you know they're happy because they gave you positive. So that makes you feel good. It's worth it. Another um, interesting thing that can happen uh, internationally, if I can get my train of thought back. Dang it. Lost my train of thought. I lost it before I said that last part. Global shipping, I think it's good, but I'm not sure people fully understand it, especially on the other end. I'd like to go to global shipping because eBay takes a little more of the heat, and supposedly, in theory, the person on the other end understands all the fees and things like that. Okay, this wasn't it, but let's talk about this. If you don't do global shipping, a person can order something, and depending on the country, they can get charged import, export, duty. And they don't, you know, they don't understand that. So they buy a hundred dollar item, it comes in, they might have to pay 30 bucks on that, up and beyond the shipping, up and beyond everything else. Sometimes that comes through as hate towards you. You know, what can you do? There are a lot of people who order stuff internationally that just expect it to to show up and and to be no problem. And sometimes I think, depending on the country, depending on the locale, they will put some sort of a note in with the mail, but then your person on the other end needs to go down to the uh, local post office, whatever they call it, and they need to check with them and they need to pay the duty to get it released. And sometimes you have to talk people through that. So I haven't covered all the customer situations most customers that buy things from us they like them most customers that buy things from us are honest i think if you're to strive for something i think you should strive for this provide high quality merchandise be towards the top of the thing the top of the pricing but present yourself in a way so as to attract the smart people that don't want to mess with the misdescribed stuff. They don't want to mess with the untested stuff. They don't want to mess with the people that don't have guarantees. They will pay a little bit of a premium. You're going to attract a better buyer. If you are selling your stuff always to the bottom, always untested, maybe you don't have a very good guarantee, like a money-back guarantee, if you're, if you're a little grumpy about the whole thing, you're going to attract that. And it might put you out of business. And so 
if I had to summarize it, do the best job you can, ship your stuff promptly, honor returns, you're going to get some, slough it off. Pull out the arrows, take out the axe, if the bowling ball hits you in the nuts, go bowling with it after you recover, you're going to get some returns. If you don't think you are, you're in the wrong business. If you don't think that anything else out there is going to be easier, you're probably fooling yourself. There's always going to be problems. Back when I was uh, working in my family business, we sold um, vitamins, we sold food, retail. We had people that would come into the store and steal from us. We had people who would buy stuff and use half of it and try to return it as new. And sometimes they would fool us. We'd have people who would buy stuff to get home and, you know, their spouse wouldn't like it. They'd come back and they'd have to return it. We'd have people who would get stuff in the mail and try to scam us. We had a few people who would try to sue us. You're always going to have problems buying and selling. You're always going to be dealing with somebody who had a bad day, who doesn't get it, who's just plain dumb, who's a whiner, who wants to abuse the system, victim, doesn't get it. I'm just going to keep going. You're always going to have those problems. Always. And the best thing you can do is realize in the big picture of things is you can always buy and sell another day. You'll make it up. Do the best you can. Sharpen your business. You'll get over it. I've taken a lot of arrows. People sometimes think, oh my goodness, sometimes, uh, this is a whole different subject, but sometimes I'm, I'm on the channel here on YouTube and I'm like, I can't believe the comments that come in. I can't believe you attack my family. I can't believe you attack me personally. I can't be, you know, believe that you don't understand what I'm saying. And sometimes I'm like, oh. And some of the comments I get back are like, dealer, just slough it off. And I do appreciate those comments, by the way. But in reality, everyone out there, you have to know this. I have taken so many arrows. Usually, when somebody returns something or somebody comments on eBay... Uh, on, on YouTube, somebody says something bad about my family or says something bad about a message that I've given out. Usually when I'm lamenting and when I'm saying something about that, I might feel a little bit of it, but I'm just sad for that person. I really am. I'm sad for that person. I'm sad for that person that they just don't get it. They're at a certain part of the learning curve and they just don't get it. I'm sad that that person doesn't get it. And that's a lot of the feeling that I have. I said the other day that I don't empathize or sympathize that well, that it doesn't come um, automatic with me. I need to refrain that. I do sympathize. I do empathize with people. I'm like, oh, I feel it. I just don't always, I don't always um, articulate it very well. I feel it. I'm sensitive to all that. I just shake my head, and part of that shaking is like, oh, dealer, you got to put up with this. But a lot of that shaking is, oh, my goodness, I wish you got it. <laughs> oh, I hope that comes across, because I'm not saying that about everybody. It's a small percentage of people that just don't get it. But they do a lot of damage. <laughs> <laughs> to themselves and others. Oh. Oh. You got to eat your Wheaties, right? <laughs> eat your Wheaties. That's just a that's just an example. <laughs> I don't know if this video was was interesting, fun, whatever. I get returns. I have silly customers. I have stupid customers. 90, 
five plus percent of my customers are awesome. Yours probably are too. Let's focus on the awesome. Let's let let's let bygones be got bygones. You know, if you harbor anger, if you get all wrapped up in this stuff, if you let it eat you, if you let it beat you, if you let it get to you, it's not good for you. You're going to pay for it in, in other ways. You need to let it go. Do your best. Know what's going to come. Deal with it. Let it go. Oh, 11.40 p.m. Thanks for watching. I hope you comment below. Tell us your stories. Let it go. Let it out. Promise not to make fun of it. It's all part of the business. Thanks for watching. Appreciate your comments. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. Tomorrow, regular vlog. I got a lot of packing done. I hope to list some stuff tomorrow. I'll show you what I list. Wednesday, Hope I hope that's listing day. I'm going to go to my uh, flea market, my local antique store, and see if she got some stuff down there. She said she might. I got cash in my pocket. I'm hoping to buy. Pick well. List often. Dealer out. Hey, Wheeler. Dealer production. <laughs>